The episode is called Fathers and Sons. Harvard scholar Henry Louis Gates Jr. hosts the show. I asked Wes Studi about his appearance with LeVar Burton, an acclaimed actor and creator of the long-running PBS series Reading Rainbow. Gates and others uh, reached out to me uh, maybe a year or so ago and said, uh, would I like to ask if I would like to do it? And uh, I gave it some consideration from, and thought that I could uh, find out some things that I've always been wondering about and decided to do so. And, uh, they came to Santa Fe, set up uh, a place to record and uh, and started it. Well, of course, we had to do the uh, submit the DNA tests first, and uh, then uh, there were two different kinds of DNA tests and uh, sent in. And then I guess, like I said, nine months to a year, something like that, we were here shooting in uh, Santa Fe. The other person on the segment was LeVar Burton. Did you meet him? No, no, it was all done uh, uh, in different places and they cut it together afterwards uh, because it was a much longer interview and the uh, book of life that they uh, uh, put together that you turn the pages and all that. Uh, um, it's, uh, there's much more of it than there is of the uh, uh, broadcast interview. I thought it was interesting that they paired you with LaVar. I mean, in a way, uh, you guys both found out some things that surprised you in your past, particularly with your lineage, didn't you? Yeah, the lineage, not about my past, but uh, the past of uh, those who went before me in my family. The, or um, I, I found out uh, who my actual biological father was, uh, and uh, it was something that I had uh, lived the larger part of my life uh, always wondering about because I had my doubts uh, one way or the other and uh, uh, I was uh, uh, actually raised by the studies uh, and my stepfather was a studie and uh, I used I've used that name since I was in second grade you know I've been to some of the places uh, that she passed through hmm I've been to many of these places, seen them. And I don't know, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's the most northern route. And it was in the wintertime. Yeah. They waited until the uh, uh, ground was a little more frozen and uh, hard, easier to walk on, rather than mud. Uh, yep. A lot of places. And she was in her late 20s or early 30s when she made that journey. What's it like to see that? To know the actual route? It, it's good to know. I, I, it's, it, it's good to know particulars and have a, a real story about how uh, we got to where we are because of, a lot of our family has been doing this genealogy thing and trying to figure out this and that and so right. uh, I'm, I'm bringing a uh, uh, wealth of information thanks to you and your program there. The thing about, uh, all, about it all was it seemed like it just uh, uh, provided more questions uh, as much as it uh, you know answered some questions uh, answered what we I had always wondered about in the way. So what are you going to do about that? I mean, did the, the Blair family, I mean, this was just like a real big revelation is that uh, your the dad, the, the man listed on your birth certificate turned out not to be your father. Do you know if there's any Blair relatives around that, that you can connect with? I understand from uh, their research that, yes, uh, the, the family continues on. And uh, since the airing, I've received emails from uh, people uh, as far away as uh, South Carolina that uh, uh, have, uh, have researched their genealogy and connected to that particular family. As a matter of fact, the, what was surprising about it all was, uh, or one surprise in the whole thing, was, was that uh, 
um, the original one, the, the Blair that they went back to as far as they possibly could was a James Blair who was known as the Paul Revere of the South. So that to me means that he must have been a part of the Confederacy. When we did the um, We Shall Remain series with the American Experience people out of Boston, you got to play a Cherokee. And um, what I understand is that yeah, first time, the first time <laughs> that you uh, you ever played a Cherokee. And uh, yeah. I, I love the part when you talk about uh, the importance of language. You went away uh, to school and you came back and you tried to apparently talk like a white guy and you really got reprimanded by your relatives. <laughs> well, yeah, that was that was a funny part of life we're in. It took, only took me something like nine months to uh, learn English. And then, like I said, uh, went home after the first uh, year of schooling. And uh, I had essentially forgotten Cherokee at that point and really didn't remember the process of having learned English. But uh, you know, I'm five and a half, six years old at the time. And uh, uh, yeah, that was, uh, uh, luckily I was young enough that I could uh, relearn the Cherokee, uh, you know, immediately because, well, it was a necessity. I had to speak Cherokee in order to eat. <laughs> what do you think about the, the way things have been going in Hollywood lately with, uh, uh, you know, I mean, Killers of the Flower Moons, not by an Indian, but certainly featuring a Native American story and, and Prey, you know, as another one. And now Echo is coming out. Um, and uh, so what what do you think about this uh, somewhat new popularity of Native American stories on television? Well, I say yay for Lily and Alakwa, I guess is her name. I, I've never heard it pronounced. But uh, yeah, I think uh, both of these actors are are, are definitely making strides and that's a wonderful thing it's uh uh something that we've been working toward for all our careers really uh, you, i mean we're, we're getting to the point of telling our own stories in, in certain ways and uh, uh that's uh that's that can only be a good thing and the beginning of maybe a, a you know a, a native uh inspired uh uh direction of filmmaking well, Wes Studi, I really appreciate you joining us on the ICT newscast. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, ICT, go.